Praise God. Praise God, church. We are excited for you guys, and uh, God is good. We got some just a wonderful day uh, planned, and um, I appreciate the, uh, just the ministry that goes on here. And I want to read, read something to you out of the book of Luke, and I, I, wanna, I want you, as you hear this, I'm going to hopefully give you a different viewpoint of a story that most of you know in this place. <clears throat> and sometimes what we do is that we, we take a look at something and we say, well, we know that. And I want you to open up your heart to take a look at this, what I'm going to share with you. That's a familiar passage of Scripture. And it'll really, really, really bless your life. But it's in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. And I just want to say, I want to, I want to thank, um, I don't know if you guys know, but, but uh, New Dawn, actually, we, we had a big post on Facebook. And um, we, we, we shot a video and we actually um, asked people that if they would go to New Dawn's website and they would donate, that we would make sure that we get those finances over to the Orlando families to help pay for their funerals. Amen? And um, the strategic thing that was so amazing that really blew my mind when, 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 when the Lord just gave us this idea was the fact that uh, uh, maybe about a month ago, five weeks ago, I don't know if you remember, Ryan Holden came and spoke here, my cousin. And we, he, was, he blessed us like crazy. Well, the thing was is that him and his wife are actually moving in two months into that whole downtown area. And what, a, what an avenue of ministry. What if, what if Ryan and Faith take those checks and are able to go to people and just say, hey, listen, we just want to let you know God loves you and pray with those people that are hurting for losing their loved ones, you know? And what an incredible thing. And I just want you to give yourselves a hand and everything, you know, because God is good and uh, we're going to bless those people. But... In Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, in verse 25 says, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and he tested him, tested Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, Well, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? What's your interpretation of it? So he answered and he said, Well, the Bible says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And he also said, and to love your neighbor as yourself. We all know that. We've heard that before, right? And he said to him, you have answered rightly. He said, do this, and you will live. But this guy, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. He wasn't even half alive. He was half dead. Half dead. Now, by chance, we're going to read about three different types of people here. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, or also, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Now remember, this guy's laying there half dead, laying in a gutter. But he says, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had what on him? Come on, say it out loud. Compassion. He had compassion on him. So he went to him. Listen, he bandaged his wounds. He pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn or a hotel, took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarius, and he gave them to the innkeeper, and he said to him, take care of him, and whatever more that you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. 
And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Three different types of people walked by this man that was half dead. And I want to give you a look of this a little bit different maybe that you've ever heard it before. But the first guy was a priest. We just talked about being a priest. A priest, of when a person walks in a priestly uh, anointing or, a, or understands their priestly uh, position in God, we know that we have access to the Father. We know that we are connected to the Father. And this person that was positionally right with God and connected with the Father and represent, listen, he represented the Father, walks right by this guy. Just walks right by. Actually walks on the other side of the road. Walks right by this man. Now listen, I want you to get out of your head not that there's anything wrong with it or anything, but you immediately assume, like in, in our American mind, we see a homeless person. We're not talking about a homeless person. We're talking about a person, and it could be a homeless person, but that's just one of many situations that that person who got beat up represents. He could have got beat up in life. He could have got beat up in all kinds of situations. He might have went through a divorce and is in pain. And, and, and spiritually, he's laying in the gutter. Whatever it is, the guy's laying there half dead. And there's people in this place, you were very, if, they, if we took you to the emergency room, all your vital signs would show that you were perfectly normal and healthy and all that. But inside, you felt half dead. You felt half dead. And half dead could look like so many things. The heartbreak of a relationship. The heartbreak of, of man, I don't know what I'm going to do. If, if God doesn't come through or somebody doesn't help me, I don't know what's going to happen to me. You could be half dead. And here this priest just goes by as if nothing. The second person is a Levite. Now, what is a Levite? A Levite is a worshiper. A Levite is who in the Old Testament, that Levite spirit, is that before they went to battle, the Levites were sent first to lead the way into battle. Isn't God funny? He doesn't send out the biggest, strongest dudes with the swords. He sends out people that worship because when you worship unto God, what does worship do? It breaks chains, sets the atmosphere for freedom, sets the atmosphere for the word. That's why I value so much our praise and worship team because they're doing frontline work before the word, before anything happens. They're, they're battling. Do you ever ask yourself, like some of you people that have been churched your whole life, do you ever notice why most of the attacks or seems to be the problems are in the praise and worship team? Why is that? Because it's the front line. Satan knows music. He used to lead worship. So he understands music. So what does he do? He comes in and he attacks the praise and the worship because he knows if you won't praise and worship God, freedom will not come. So this Levite who walks in freedom, who is a worshiper, sees this guy half dead, walks across the other side of the road and just leaves him there, just Ignores them. Ignores them. Now listen, this is not a, a spirit of condemnation thing like, oh yeah, you know that homeless guy, I, I did have a dollar in my pocket, but I didn't give it to him. I didn't feel like, I didn't know if he was on drugs. Listen, stop all that foolishness running through your head. Listen, listen to what the Lord is trying to say. You have a priest and a Levite walk by this guy. Now you have a Samaritan walk by him. Who were the Samaritans? When Assyria came and dominated Israel, when Israel was held captive, they sent people into Israel in different parts of Israel. And there was this section known as Samaria where these people came and began to filter into the culture of the Israelites. 
And when they filtered into their culture, they didn't submit to the culture of God only. They brought their idols and their, and their, and their, uh, their, their witchcraft and all those things, their paganism. They brought it into and they mixed it with God's stuff. They believed in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The other books of the Bible they did not believe in. So they took part of God's word out. They didn't believe the prophets. They believed the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible that I just named to you. So what they did is, so these, these Assyrians and these people, when they, when they began to mix with the Israelites, their whole religion was actually pretty jacked up. They brought God type of stuff with paganism. And, and so you can't have something where there's mixed gods. So the thing is, which I think is terrible because I think any form of prejudice or looking down or any type of caste system is terrible. But what, they, what the Israelites, the ones that were pure, they looked down on Samaritans. Samaritans were the lowest of the low. They were despised. Remember Jesus was talking to the woman at the well? Remember her? She had, she had, she had five husbands. You know? She was a Samaritan. What did she tell Jesus? She looked at him and says, why are you talking to me? Because Jews don't, don't want, they don't associate with Samaritans. Well, why? I just explained to you why. Because they had mixed stuff in how they worshipped. And so you have, a, you have a priest, you have a Levite, and then you have a Samaritan that walks by. Let me tell you something. I want to give you a thought. I believe this is a picture of the church of today. I believe it's a view of the church of today. Because we're all priests in position. We're all supposed to be worshipers. And the average church, listen, the average church is praising and singing and worshiping and getting word. And man, that was good, Pastor. Oh, yeah, I felt, I felt goosebumps on my arm. And, and we're getting the word and we're growing in the word. And we have Bible studies during the week. And I'm not talking about just I'm us. I'm just talking about the church in general. Okay, come on. We live in America, so I'm talking about the American church. So we do that. We, we sing, and we're priests. We have authority. We have power. Let me say this to you. Because of culture, we're also very Samaritan. Because most of us are not Jewish and have received Messiah. Most of us were just jacked up all over the map, doing everything. We came to Christ, and even when we're serving Christ, we're still jacked up. We're still like, you know, got stuff that we're working through. God's working on us, you know, and everything. So there's, there's sometimes you look at people and like, wait, the Bible says this. What are you doing mixing that and everything like that? You know, listen, the Bible says you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You work out your own. Let the Holy Spirit deal with people. That's his job. That's not your job. Now, is your job to share truth? Is your, and listen, and if you share truth, how are you to share it? You're to share it in love. Love. We share truth like we want somebody to go to hell. We share truth like we want like, like something bad to happen to them. Like, you, you, like I mean, I, I've watched people. Priest, Levite, two-thirds of the people that walked by this man that was half dead, knew who they were, walked in the authority of God, sang praises unto God. But the Samaritan is the one who stopped and acted like Jesus acted. Jacked up, confused as all get out, got all kinds of stuff going on, what did that woman at the well tell Jesus, the Samaritan woman? She, she, when she began to tell her friends about, about this man that she met, what did she say? Come meet a man who told me everything about me. 
What was she so excited about? That somebody acknowledged her. Come on now. Jesus broke that barrier between the Samaritan and the Jew. Jesus was showed how he restored Samaritan people. Now listen, what did he tell the woman? Now go and sin no more, right? How about the woman caught in adultery? He didn't sit there and say, hey, I just love you and uh, it's all good. Now go ahead and shack up again. No, 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 no. He said, go and sin no more. And we need to let the Holy Spirit, that's his job. We share the truth. The truth will what? Make you free. Priest walking by, dude's half dead. God's heart and love is to stop and help him. Hallelujah. I praise Jesus. I, we learned a new song. Good, good father. You know, make me a house of prayer. We're sitting there. Make me a house of prayer. And then all, the dude's dying. Make me a house of prayer. We're doing all this stuff. Make me a, he's a good, good father. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Oh, I see you dying over there. Yeah, he's real, real good. And, and he's dying. He's dying. And here comes jacked up, confused as all get out, mixing stuff with God's stuff. You know, God, all, and here he goes, kneeling down, paying this dude two days worth of wages, saying, hey, listen, here's money. Take care of him. He helped clean him up. Took care of him. Powerful. Just a powerful, powerful thought. So let me say this to you, church. Let me finish. It's so funny when you look at this trinity of people. It looks like the church of today. Priest, praiser, and jacked up. Come on now. You know I'm telling the truth. Priest, praiser, and jacked up. Confused. But he said, which one acted the way I would act? He said, well, the Samaritan. And let me say this to you. Before you cast aside the priest and the Levite, just remember this. God has called you to be a priest, and God has called you to be a Levite. He didn't ask you to be a Samaritan because he doesn't want you to be confused. He just said, look at this person and their heart. They don't even fully know everything that I teach but they're stopping and having what? What's the word? The C word. Compassion. And here, listen, here is simply the end of my message that I want to say this to you. Here's, this, here's the thing. Lathan, don't worry. Sit with your family. Take your time. Enjoy them. Enjoy them. We love you, Eliza. <laughs> huh? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Sly. You guys just hold on to them as much as you can. That's our keyboard player, if you didn't know. Just, okay. Because so, everyone's like, who is that? <laughs> God has called you to be a priest. God has called you to be a worshiper. And God has called us to have compassion. God has called us to have compassion. You know, when, when I look across this place, I know in my heart that the foundation of this church is not a bunch of people that just want to do church. I don't want to do church. I don't want to just do church. Come on, people. I don't want to just do church. I look forward to the day. Let, let, me, let me tell you what church looks like to me in the future. What church looks like to me is people walking in, and the presence of God's Spirit is so strong in this place that people would run to the altar. They would kneel before a powerful God because they feel his real presence in the place. That's what church looks like to me. That when we speak the word, God's word is changing lives and transforming people. And people are encountering God and, and all those things. That's what church looks like. But let me say this to you. But, but if we want the whole package, church was never meant to be with inside the walls, four walls. It was meant to be outside the walls. Last week, I shared with you guys a vision that I have and that I, that I had and have. And this vision is about reaching children 
for Jesus Christ. It's about reaching children that possibly, maybe, I don't know, I haven't done a poll, I haven't knocked on every single door in the community, but that possibly we might be the only opportunity that they hear about Jesus Christ. Could be. There could be a whole bunch of them. They've been church, they've been to church, church. I don't know. But I've been many, many times by myself in Baldwin Village, driving around Baldwin Village in those apartments over there, and praying and looking and seeing and praying and looking and seeing until one day where I said, you know what? We're just going to step out in faith and do something for the children in this community. I don't know a single person who lives in, in, in one of those apartments. Not one. And just began going over there and I said, you know what? I said, I refuse to limit church to these four walls. Pastor, why didn't you pick somewhere closer, somewhere where maybe we can get them to go to church? Listen, I hope they come to church, but I want to bring the church to them. I want to do church where they are. And they may never have an opportunity, I don't know, but I want to be, help be part of the reason that they hear about Christ. I know back in the day, that area was super scary. And I've seen some funky things go on at night, too, over there. Uh, but let me just say this to you. You have all these apartments surrounding this park. And let me tell you what all I see. I see opportunity. Opportunity. That's all I see. I see opportunity. Well, what if, Pastor, why are we going to go there and they're not going to come to church? Listen, church is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. I have a video that we did that I want you guys to see, and it's going to bless you, and it's just something simple, but I want you to see where we went, where we're going, and I want to tell you about an opportunity where, listen, as a church, we can show compassion, that we could be a priest, that we could be a Levite, and we can be a person of compassion, because Jesus wasn't telling you to be a Samaritan. He was just saying, look at the Samaritan, as jacked up as he was, he even had compassion. You guys should be, he was saying, you guys, you priests, you worshipers, you need to have compassion. You need to have compassion. So we can show, you ready to go, Mark? Let's, let's watch this video. Hey, New Dawn family. Um, I'm here with uh, Anna, Alicia and Melody, and we're just actually driving um, through the apartment complex is over here in LA where we're sort of in the Baldwin Hills area off of Coliseum and, and Rodeo and we're just incredibly amazed at the opportunity here because this whole section is just apartment building after apartment building and um, there are so many kids I've driven by here myself so many times and there's like crazy amounts of children and young families and you know our goal is is to bring the love of jesus to to this area um you know this is a little bit far from our church uh, but that's not necessarily our goal our goal is not necessarily to try to get them to church we want to bring the church to them and all these apartments just hundreds and hundreds of apartments this is just one street of many where there's tons of, of apartment buildings and what an incredible opportunity to come over here build relationships and um, um, and just and just minister to kids yeah know? like imagine a child coming to Jesus like kids are so moldable and so impressionable and then to find to have them have a birthday party for the first time or just be able to love Jesus for the first time or see the love of Jesus for the first time they they would tell everyone they know like it would change their lives completely Melody this if you can get a shot of this um activity center over here that's where I met those kids that I told you about and I just felt like it was such confirmation of 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 this of doing this event because you know I, I ran into five young men that actually told me that they would be a part of it I told them all about it got to pray with them and um, and so I just I just tell you this is just on an unbelievable 
opportunity and we're actually gonna make our way over to the park where we're gonna do our setup but you could just see like I, you know what we don't realize is that a lot of times these families you know they have their their older uh, the older sibling is taking care of the younger siblings because mom and dad can't afford to to put them like in summer camp or preschool or anything like that and so they're just sitting there um, on the internet watching television and that's all they're exposed to and um, and I'll tell you something I've talked to some friends I can't tell you first I have seen some crazy stuff around here because I've been here a lot and I've seen a lot but I've heard I've heard a lot of things going on and and I and are uh, in this area especially at night and we really want to bring hope um, to kids so we're gonna make our way over to the park and uh, if, if you guys get involved in this it'll bless your life you know we really need to not just uh, receive the word uh, on Sunday but we need to live the word we need to release the word we need to show the word and so we're gonna um, park here in a minute and show you guys you know exactly what we're going to do we're over here at the site and Alicia and I are over at the site on where we're actually gonna have the kids day birthday celebration so right behind me you know is the field and we're going to have a setup here it's going to be amazing so could you imagine uh, children for for a couple of weeks in advance being handed out invitations in the community and and them inviting their friends to a free event they're gonna come here and the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna have events like uh, games and activities you know for a little while and then what we're going to do before before they eat we're gonna provide like hot dogs and soda and chips for, for all the kids and everyone who shows up. Everyone who shows up will get that. We're also going to have birthday cake and sing happy birthday to those birthdays in that month. But um, we are also going to have a gospel presentation. We're going to have a short time where everyone gets together. We're going to have a sound system there, our huge backdrop, which you guys are going to love. And then could you imagine hundreds of kids, you know, uh, and I'm believing for hundreds of kids, you know, as this thing progresses every month, um, for kids to come, they're going to hear the gospel, and then they're going to have a big birthday celebration. They're going to receive Christ. It's just going to be amazing. You, you don't want to miss it. Uh, you want to be a part of it and, and I believe that this is just the first location I believe we'll have a dedicated team for this location and the vision is to set it up in different places all over LA yeah I definitely encourage you guys to come out it's gonna be on Saturdays to be Saturday July the 9th at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. you guys should definitely sign up in the back table you know how much we love our kids and just think of this as an opportunity to just love on hundreds of kids in this area that really desperately need love and just attention and just birthdays and need the gospel. So I encourage you guys to come out and come join us as we do something amazing for this community. Thank you guys. Thank you for your dedication and love. And just, uh, I believe, I, listen, I believe it's, it's the first location of many. So God bless you and uh, we'll see you in the back table after service. Patsy, if we can go ahead and, 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 and distribute um, those, Betty, um, I'll, I'll, we have a, um, um, an outline of what's going to happen at a Kids' Day um, celebration. And so, church, let me just say this to you as you're, as you're getting the paperwork. Let me say this to you. There are many forms to touch people. There are many ways to touch people's lives. There's not one cookie-cutter way to, to, to minister to people outside. You can go over to San Pedro Street and, hand, and, and feed the homeless. You could go, we can go to, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? We can go to uh, uh, home centers, you know, where the elderly are, the elderly places and minister and do things like that. There's so many ways. We can do uh, ministry in, in prisons and, and reach the people in prisons. Listen, Jesus said to do all those things. But let me just tell you this. Let me tell you what works. What works is if you do something. That's what works. What works is doing something. It's not talking about something. It's doing something. It's doing something. So what does a kid's day event look like? So when you get there, kid's day birthday celebration, if you're looking under the, the colorful banner at the top, is the new outreach ministry of New Dawn Christian Village. The vision is to bring the love of God to children and their families where they live. 
Through much prayer and investigation, we've chosen a community that is rich with children and opportunity. Jim Gilliam Park is located in Baldwin, Baldwin Village and is uniquely surrounded by hundreds of apartment buildings filled with young families and children. We have created a fun-filled outreach that will be truly remembered by each child as they attend. This is what will happen at a, at a Kids' Day event. One, uh, once a month, we'll host a Kids' Day birthday celebration honoring the birthdays of those children born in that month. Could you imagine people getting flyers and kids getting flyers? And if their birthday it falls in the month of July, they'll feel special. It's, it's, it's an invitation to everyone. But just, I just look forward to singing happy birthday to those kids where they can invite anybody they want. The event is from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and all kids are invited. The children will, will arrive to a beautiful setup with our 20 foot wide by 8 foot high backdrop, tables of birthday cake, food, our portable sound system, and volunteers ready to greet them and have fun. Every child 12 and under who participates will get a Kids' Day birthday celebration bracelet. Only kids 12 and under will receive the bracelet. The celebration will open up with games, and every game will have a prize for them regardless of the outcome. Every activity associated with the event will have a blessing. Uh, will have a blessing we will hand to the children. Games are for the children 12 and under. Now, we have the games 12 and under for a reason. Because when you have bigger kids, obviously, we don't want the little kids to get hurt. So we have to cut it off at a certain point. We will play games from 11 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. From 12.15 to 12.40, we will have a special word that will be shared with the children where the message of Jesus will be the center of discussion. We will give the good news message of salvation and pray for the children. Number nine, we will acknowledge the birthdays of that month, have them stand, and then sing happy birthday to them. You know what? I believe many children will receive Jesus Christ. And so when we sing happy birthday, it's not going to be only the birthdays of their physical birth, but it'll be happy birthday to their spiritual birth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will pray, number 10, we will pray for the food, and the children will then have hot dogs, a can of soda, and birthday cake waiting for them. We will feed all family members and anyone who is around. Hallelujah. But we will feed the children first. The goal of our team at this point is to build relationships. Our team will be encouraged to be sensitive to the needs of others and to pray for whoever needs it. Listen, church. I love the activities. The main part is the gospel message. But you have no idea that afterwards, listen, when there's food being distributed, kids are having fun, eating birthday cake, that's when the parents of those kids or bystanders will be around. And it'll be a matter of meeting them, greeting them, seeing how they're doing. How can I pray for you? And let me tell you what I love about this. If you turn your sheet over, if you turn your sheet, sheet over, this is important. We are not looking for a one-hit wonder event. We are believing to build a strong relationship with that community and to deposit the love of Christ in those children that will leave a spiritual imprint for eternity. Consistency is the key. This is a tool that we can use to touch the hearts of people. Pray that you can help us pull off such an event. Any donation would be a blessing. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Pray also about being a part of our Kids Day team. Now listen, I pray in the name of Jesus that, that the Lord would, would, would speak to your heart. But look at the needs that we have. Number one, we need a setup crew. That means putting up the tables, the banner, and the sound system. Food set up cooking hot dogs, set up food station, cake cutters and servers, drink station servers, prize distributors. What is that? That's the people for all the games. They hand out the bracelets and ha hand out the prizes. Now, why do you need a person for a, a, game, a, a prize distributor? Because if you don't have a prize distributor, those kids will go in and they will grab every single medal or whatever you try to give them as a gift. So you have to have order. Trust me, I've done this before. So it's not the first time that I'm doing it. Game coordinators will participate in the games with the kids. This is really important. We will keep order as we transition from one game to another. We'll help line up the kids and organize them depending on the game being played. Evangelism community team will hand out flyers the two weeks prior to the event. This is important, people. This is about going 
knocking on some doors, meet, going into that community, walking around, doing some prayer walks, meeting people, and inviting them out, you know, to this. Now, listen, I, I, I'm just saying this to especially our women. We're going to be organized about this, so we don't want just women walking around there by themselves and doing that. Please don't do that. We want to be organized. We want to have accountability. We want to be careful about what we want to use wisdom. Amen? Salvation team will be ready to pray for kids and provide moral support to the children or family members who receive Christ the day of the event. Face painters. This is something that we want to do but are unsure of. Let us know if you're interested. Let me tell you why we're unsure of it. We're unsure of it because face painting takes, takes a while. So if you don't have like five face painters and stuff working and stuff like that, you'll see the line will be so huge. And what we don't want to do is kids to be discouraged from not receiving a blessing. Amen. And then we have a cleanup crew. Those who can stay or can, and can come later to return, to return the location to a trash-free zone. Look at the dates of the Kids' Day events. July 9th, August 6th, September 3rd, October 1st, November 5th. And December 10th, we have six opportunities to touch the lives of children. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it does it? Yeah, my bad. I have an, uh, an old one. Yes, August 13th. I was looking at my iPad. Thank you. August 13th. That's the only off date. And there's a reason why, because the week before we have a conference to be a lot of the young adults and stuff. We're going to be going to the Jesus Culture Conference. So um, we had to move it to the 13th. But listen, I want, I want you to pr pray about this, people. Listen, look at our, our one-time costs. Do you guys see the banner in the back? Did you guys notice the big banner? I want you to, can you, if you can't see it, I don't mind if you stand up and take a look. That's our 20-foot by 8-foot Kids' Day birthday celebration banner. Isn't that, isn't that first class? Isn't that? It's mobile. It, it falls down like an accordion. That costs us over $1,150. We're buying a generator for $550, which is a great deal, and that will be able to operate the sound system, anything else that we're cooking. Uh, the bracelets cost us $110. We need two tables, uh, electric portable double burner, and our portable sound system was donated. Thank you to the princes, Stanley and Alice, donated a, a portable sound system with a microphone and speakers and everything. Thank you, you guys. Love you. And, um, and the event costs for each month. Kids' prizes will cost us about $100 a month. Uh, hot dogs are like 50, buns 30, soda 70, and cakes around 54. And we'll have some other costs, but those we have some one-time costs just to help us to get started, and, and then we have regular costs. And I believe with, listen, I, I'm not ashamed of this because I, I know why I'm doing this, but I believe there, there's people in this place, you can even help pay for the banner. I'm talking about one person, and I believe that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray right now and I'm going to ask the Lord to deal with your heart that you would be a part of making this ministry happen. Because here's the thing. I don't, I know, I don't, I don't think, I know that just coming to church and being a priest and a Levite is not going to do it. We need to be compassionate and reach our community. And I believe this is a powerful, spirit-guided idea that the Lord is saying on how, how we can go into communities and help build relationships and bring the church to them. Amen. Father, I ask you to, to, to minister to each person. I ask you, Lord, to, to deal with their heart, Father. Lord, I'm not up here as a used car salesman or some guy doing an auction. But I'm here representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I, I stand confidently in front of these people that you've blessed uh, me with as a pastor, Lord. And I just make a plea. That you would speak to them, Lord, about being involved in this ministry. Lord, I believe there's people in this place that can just pay off that banner. I pray, Father, you put it on somebody's heart to pay for the generator. I pray that you put it on somebody's heart, Lord God, to just to, to pay for even a whole month's worth, Father God, of, of what it would take to put on an event with the cake and the food and all those things. Father, I pray that you would speak and that you would guide and that you would lead. So, Lord, do your work, Lord. I've put it out there. Holy Spirit, you just touch their hearts. God, I ask you that you would send faithful volunteers, that you would prick our heart, 
That we would, Father, not just be a, a new dawn parishioner, but Lord, that we would be the church, the ecclesia, that we would be the church of God, and that we would go into our community and minister, Father. So I just thank you. Father, I rebuke a spirit of condemnation or guilt or anything like that. We're not trying to put that on anyone. But God, we're just trying to reach our community to have compassion. Lord, I pray, let us make a difference. We love and praise you, Lord. And we, pray, we thank you in advance for the harvest of souls that will come as we go into this area and build relationships. Month after month, Lord God, six times we have an opportunity this year to touch these people. So Lord, release your compassion on our life. We give you praise in Jesus' name. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. There's two things. Every single person in here is going to get an envelope, and if you need a pen, there's going to be a pen. Let me tell you what that's for. A, I, I want you to sow a seed towards this. I want you to, I want you to be, be a part of this powerful thing. On the outside of your envelope, and I pray that God would speak to you, if you are interested in being involved and on one of the teams for something, can you, uh, you, can you please put what you want to be involved in? If you want to be involved in, in the setup crew or the food setup, some of you may just write, put me wherever you need me. But, but here on the inside of the envelope, you see the space where you can put your name. If you can put your name and your cell phone number so we can get a hold of you. And I also want you to sow a seed. Now, here's the thing. Some of us may not have it right now, may not have it this week, but I want you to put down the amount that you're, that you're going to sow, that you want to sow. And, and I'm going to give you a moment here because husbands and wives may need to talk and everything, but, but we're going to do this. We're going to do this, and we're going to do it awesome. Pastor, why'd you get such a big banner? Because I believe if we're going to do something, we're going to do it big. I don't want to do it halfway. I want those kids walking up and bang, they see that big old banner in the back. Birthday cake, kids having fun. Let me tell you something. We can touch this next generation. We can touch it. So just please put your name on the envelope. And um, if you need a pen, slip up your hand. We'll get you a pen. And um, on the outside of the envelope, if you can write what what you can help be a part of. What, what, what is it that you can do to help serve in this ministry? I pray for you to Hallelujah. let you go. Some of you didn't hear this, and I want you to hear me real quick. When I first got saved, I was a part, my first ministry out of anything was I taught two and a half year old children. I used to hold two and a half year old babies, and I used to sing, you know, you know, the wheels on the bus go. You know, I used to do all I'm this big old dude, you know, holding kids and singing to children. My pastor said to me, he said, "Listen," he said, "if you're spiritually unemployed, he said, get involved in something." He says, "If you don't like, give it six months. If you don't like it, go to something else." He goes, "But you should always be doing something for the Lord." And so I got involved in children's ministry. I didn't know what to get involved with, so I'm here helping these two and a half year olds and this couple that used to serve in the ministry they said Irwin they said uh, uh, listen we need help on a Saturday for for an event that we do the person that we normally have uh, with us they can't make it and and we just we really need someone to help us I was like well what are you guys doing he says well we do we do a little event in this apartment complex and and and, and they explained it to me he's and the wife was like I dress up like a clown she has this whole clown outfit, and he says, we go with candy, and we go, and we hand out the candy to the kids, and they come down, and then we do a gospel presentation, and they did it for like 12 to like 15 kids max that were there, but I remember this couple on their own, no, no news camera there, no, it, it, the pastor wasn't saying, oh, look at their great ministry, on their own, they loved kids, and they, reached, and I'm telling you, God grabbed, I was so nervous, but God grabbed my heart, and here I was just talking to kids and meeting kids. And I could see when the clown came, all the kids, you could see, like, because you walk into this courtyard, and it's surrounded by apartments, and all these little kids look over the railing like this, and they see the clown, and they all came down to just have fun. How much, listen, how much more 
we're going to have this big, huge backdrop, sound system, food laid out, all these different things, and excellent games and fun. How much more do you think that word's going to spread for those children? I believe in this with all my heart. I am fully invested. I'm all in. My chips are all in the middle of the table. So I just I appreciate you guys because, um, because God will bless the churches that reach out and touch and use what's in them to touch people. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Brother Marcus.